Uh, well, I didn't have a childhood as a child in the sense that I was not much of a child. I matured very fast. Uh, I don't remember playing with dolls. I don't remember playing with toys. Uh, but I do remember that what I always wanted for birthday was a pen, you know, a pencil set, things like that has got to do with uh, writing. Yeah. And um, so uh, my childhood would be uh, playing the kind of games that uh, boys played. I was in Kampung Baru most of the time, uh, where I played uh, kites with the late Jamal Pende. Yes, and with his brothers, we were, good, we were neighbours. I played gasing, made my own gasing from the branch of the jambu tree near my house and stuck nails inside there and with the sharp edge down. Played marbles, played uh, cut down trope, you know, the cigarette packets and you stack them up in a circle and you find the best piece of pebble and try to knock everything out of that. So, so I played all those games that girls never played. I never thought that I would be different because I was the only girl. And they never thought I was different either. Uh, and uh, if I ever played in a group apart from those games, it would be being the teacher. Uh, you know, imagine at six, seven years old, you're playing a teacher, you're the teacher, you're telling these young kids younger than you or your age, you know, okay. Now, what is two plus two? Things like that. And uh, that was my childhood. And of course, I learned the uh, responsibility of life very early. Um, already attended two Malay school. I was already going to market in Chalky Road, walking to market on Sundays. And my mother was not free because she had to do washing and all that. So she sent me off to market with a list of things to buy. And I'm supposed to buy them. And let's say, choose the ikan. You know, she said, okay, buy ikan kembung ke ikan ini. I pilih elo. And I'm supposed to pilih, you know, the one with the, rest, the red gills. Uh, and find a kind of tauge that was not withered, with kerang, fresh kerang, and she would give a few cents extra. Okay, let's see what you like to buy. And you must remember, this was eight, nine years old. Okay, and to me, it was nothing normal. And here you're carrying this this bamboo basket, and um, nothing to me. And then, of course, uh, going to buy groceries and putting it down in your buku tiga, buku tiga lima, kan? Literally, lah. You know, ambil beras, berapa gantang. Those days, tak ada kilo-kilo gantang kan, gula. And then, ujung bulan, add up. And then, utang my mother, nak kita utang Pak Ali ni punya mana. Macam itulah. That was my childhood, if you want to talk about a childhood. In other words, it was assuming responsibility very, very early in life, which I never realised I was doing. To me, it was a normal thing to do. And my parents accepted that as being normal. So, when before I went to school, I can imagine standard two, standard three. Before I went to school, I cooked uh, breakfast. Masa air dulu jerang air, nak gunakan kayu. Kan jerang pun kayu. Beli blow, buatkan kopi. Letak kopi situ. Bentang seperah tu kan ada seperah lah maknanya. Kain apa tu? Alam meja ke atas lantai. Kita tak ada kursi meja. Duduk kampung baru. Tepi sungai tu, sungai bonus. Tak kat situ, letak uh, apa namanya kopi teh. Um, saya tak makan, kadang-kadang saya teringin nak buat apa nasi goreng. Nasi goreng lah sendiri, malamnya nasi. Ini kita nak pergi sekolah jadu ni. Goreng. And tinggalkan untuk mak dengan ayah. Dia tak anggun lagi. You must remember. So, in other words, to me, tak ada benda. So, saya heran tengok anak-anak anak kita anak, anak, anak sekarang. Eh. Allah, 6-7 tahun kita punya manjanya. Kenapa pun tak nak pergi kan? Ambil air pun tak kerti. Misal, misal kata, jadi... Uh, kalau dia tanya childhood, saya tak kerti nak cakap apa itu je lah. Ha, gosok baju sendiri, bukannya mak je gosok, saya. Uh, Serika orang kan, saya beli serika orang dah besar ni nunjuk kat anak cucu. Apa serika saya guna, ada je. Cari kat kedai tu. Nak tunjuk, this is my iron you know. Ha. So in other words, that was, if you can call it childhood. It was really adulthood <laughs> at a very young age. The other three children were normal. They didn't have to do all these things unless they were told to do it. I, I don't know. I just found myself doing it. I, I, I don't understand it either. No. So as a result, I think it. Um, maybe I was born like that. Maybe I was an old person born as a baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? There are some people who they say uh, old in a in a in a young body. I don't know. It could be. When I remember when I was uh, in school, I don't, I didn't really go and play recess, you know. Bukan main kejar-kejar. I do not know how to play chasing in the sun. I really do not know how to play 
the games that people play. Yeah, I'm more concerned about sitting down in the shade, reading something, going to the library. And I remember I was in Kota Baru, uh, Datuk Nik Ishak, yeah, who was my teacher. He had just come back from uh, Kirby. And uh, I don't know, I enjoyed chatting with him. Imagine, I was only standard four. Okay, by the time I was in Kota Baru, I standard four. And I would, when recess time, he'll be in the class, okay, in uh, Zanab school. And I would watch, uh, has he finished eating? Because I would be eating and I would finish. Oh, has he finished eating? So sometimes he's just relaxing. And I would run up to the class and sit down in front of him and chat. I cannot remember exactly what I chatted, but obviously it's not, uh, you know, some childish chatter. Finally, he named his daughter after me. And reported to me later on, he said, you know, by the way, Rafida, my daughter is named after you, Rafida. It must, I must have struck a chord in him somehow. I mean, now I put it back two and two together, kan? No, I would go up and talk to him. I didn't go and play with my friends. I would join the Girl Guide, Rangers, Brownies, you know, that I love. Uh, Red Cross, you name it, I'm, I'm all in all these associations. I take part in every, organ, uh, every activity. Because I want to ask, uh, during your school time, is there any specific subject that you love much? No, I loved all the subjects because the curriculum was very balanced. You, you know, uh, I wish we could go back to those days. We had gardening classes, yeah. Friday morning was gardening, so each class was given a bed. You know, a bed can batas, and we were told, okay, make the best of your batas. But the competition, that though. So if we want to grow flowers ke, nak grow chili ke, or grow a patch of chili, you know, up to you lah. So we will just get together and make sure kita punya batas ni tak ada grass, tak ada apa. Imagine, you're only standard four, okay? Batas. Then we have needle, apa ni, domestic science. Kelas rumah tangga. Where I learn how to sew, how to knit, how to do crochet, how to do smoking. So I'm able to do all these things now. You, I, I can knit any time, a whole set of paper chair bags, uh, give me just uh, the thread, get me the, the crochet, I can knit, because we thought this, I can do smoking, of course my work never got into exhibitions, that's not the point, the point is I was able to do it, there were cooking, basic cooking classes, so I can cook, so you develop that. Uh, inclination to do things that you wouldn't have done. That's why, you know, it was easy for me to do things at home because in school it was there, right? Then I love uh, those classes that involve science. I was a science student all around, sampai habis. And uh, I was I spent time in the library reading encyclopedias, reading science books. Science excited me very much. Uh, knowledge, you know. I I, I mean, as I told you, recess time I've been in the library. Going through all these things, you can't afford, can? Encyclopedia, so it's so ter uh, apa, uh, apa, very nice, exhilarating. You, know, you read about astronomy, so that was my uh, recollections of childhood. Basically, even at your very tender age, you already developed uh, some characteristic of not wanting to follow, but you you set your own. No, I follow uh, what the. Elders tell me, you know, because the teachers, uh, for example, about integrity. Uh, I remember in the convent, again, I was only standard two in the convent, eh, Bukit Nanas. Uh, the nuns, they talk about honesty. They don't talk about integrity. That's a big word. Honesty je. Okay, what does honesty mean? And she said, if you see five cents on the floor, those days five cents big, right? Today five cents, you just throw it away. Five cents on the floor... You don't take it for yourself because that five cents belongs to someone. It could be that girl's bus money home. It could be that girl's recess money. That's her, she didn't have breakfast, that's her lunch afterwards, right? And if you take it, then she goes without the food. Or she has to walk home or find her way home without uh, having money for the bus. So what you do is you pick that money, give to the teacher. And the teacher then will ask who lost five cents. That's honesty. And I can recite to you because it struck, in my, it struck me so uh, distinctly. I remember that is what integrity is all about. 
now you translate it multiple times in a bigger way. Uh, that means, and then they lagi cakap lagi, you know, when you do work, you do with responsibility. So all these were nurtured in school. We, they call it sociology class. Because everything was done in English, remember? So you got sociology. I, I, I always look forward to sociology. I remember asking a question, you know. Like, by the time I was, you see, I went through convent from standard one to standard three, then went to, to Kota Baru, standard four to standard six, and I came back to convent Bukit Anas, and then went to convent Johor Baru for two years, and then went to VI because my father got transferred all over, right? Every one of these schools had something uh, to add to my life, you know, in terms of teaching, can. So in the convent, there was sociology. Uh, convents are very good then. They taught you from young. Sampai, I didn't realize that from four, from five, I would still be educated in all the values of life. I remember the sociology class, apart from all these things, expansion of honesty, responsibilities, kan? I remember, okay, what questions you have uh, about social responsibility and uh, uh, making friends, respecting friends, semua. Kita gatal tanya kan, I said, um, apa sister, uh, can we have boyfriends? Form 4 ni, can we have boyfriends? Of course you can, none ni, eh? of course you can have boyfriends. Boyfriends are friends who are boys, why not? But, make sure that you're not having them just to get married. You're still schooling. And even she went on to expand. The concept of boyfriends at your age is just friends who happen to be boys. You know why? Because we have to go to the boys' school for science. Our labs are not well equipped. Twice a week, we were in English college. So in other words, the school system uh, added value to our lives. You know, and, and we applied it at home. At the same time, the, at home, the mother and father pun nurture juga. Hiduplah berkat, live a blessed life. Baraka. And to me, that was very important. You know, because you cannot, I don't think I could have done it myself. You have to learn from somewhere, right? So, on reflection, this is how I gathered here and there, uh, pick up the good points. What, what about the leadership? Like maybe, you know, you are as a head of the class. Uh, wait, leadership to me has never been about opposition. Leadership is your characteristic. It's the fact that people listen to you, you're a leader. The fact that you can say something positive and it makes an impact, you're a leader. You may not be the person in charge, you know, but you're the one taking charge. That's a leader to me. Anyway, a father who cannot run the family, govern the family, is not a leader. No? It could be the son who's a leader of the family. You see what I mean? So leadership is about how you govern what you are in. If you are in a family, how do you govern the family? If you are in the office, how do you govern the office? If you are in a, a shop, how do you govern the people working in the shop, your customers? If you, of course, then you go riot right up to the country. Lah kan? I use the word govern very broadly. That's how I've been saying it. So, when I became, let's say, a class prefect, when I, was, I kept, became patrol leader uh, as a girl guide, patrol leader as a land ranger. You know, these are all very coveted things, but I never coveted them. I just did merrily go along. But obviously, when you do things right, you're recognized. You become patrol leader. You, know, you just get appointed as patrol leader. And then you realize that you are slightly above the rest because you're that leader. And there is some responsibility. You cannot be uh, as the others. Lah. You have to show better, kan? Ah, that's how I learned young. Kalau you dah prefect, takkan you pula nak make noise because I was one of the naughtiest in class. Please remember, I've always been very naughty, meaning that I cannot sit still. When the teacher is talking there, I remember Mrs. Tong, Puan Sri Tong, Tong Yoh Hong tu. I was sitting by the door and I have a little mirror and I'll be doing that in the sunlight while she's writing on the board. And she, was, she would do that and find, what was that? They keep quiet. And I was a science student. I would take a little bit of iron filing. You know iron filing too? Yes. And put it in the, do in the uh, desk yang buka-buka tu of one of my colleagues, you know, where she would open the book and definitely the iron filing would make her sneeze. I mean, these are not things. And I would hide the teacher's purse just to play a prank on her on April Fool's Day. You know, I was, I was a young child. You see, that, was, that child in me never went off, of course. Even today, it's still there. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, while you're having this fun as a child, which, you, you know, as a normal child, because the other side of me that were doing all these things that adults do, I, get, I, thought, 
I thought uh, I was recognized for that. So uh, I became pre class monitor, I became school prefect, even to my own surprise, how can I the naughty girl be? But obviously, when you become prefect, you cannot be naughty anymore. You see, then I learned, oh my God, I'm a prefect. So it's self-discipline. Uh, so throughout life, I to learn. So when I'm be, I made something, uh, I became something, appointed as something, a new awareness. Oh my God, this carries some weight, some responsibility. Don't take it lightly, you know. It's like becoming a wakil rakyat. You know, oh my God, I spent days wondering. Wow, it's a heavy. It's not yang berhormat ni yang bekerja. Oh, yang berhormat is nice lah kan? With all your tags, uh, plug on your car, that's rubbish. I never had one. UIB is yang bekerja. What do I do? Bekerja. Not even yang berkhidmat, bekerja. So then I I put in my mind, okay, this is what I will do. So I lasted 35 years as MP because I focus on yang bekerja.